Welcome to the Embodiment Podcast. This show is for you if you see the body as more than a brain taxi. It's for people interested in coming home to the body as a holistic aspect of who we are and how we live. Episodes contain practical tips, exercises you can take away, and interviews with specialists from around the world. I'm your host for today, Mark Walsh. On the show today, Rabia Hayek. So Rabia is um, a breath worker and he has his own breath work company joining us from um, LA today. Rabia, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mark. Great to be with you. Let's dive into your story. How did you get interested in the body? Let's do it. Fantastic. How, how I ended up getting in, 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 interested in the breath in this particular work uh, was actually through singing originally and my yogic path both diverging and what it was i was uh i had a degree in voice teaching people how to sing for many years and as my yogic path increased and the breath became very interesting and more and more interesting uh from a a a developing my consciousness perspective i noticed that uh as i was teaching people breath for singing i would teach them more and more and they began actually having experiences it was a funny moment (laughs) and so so uh to traverse from there i had a vision uh, to unite the planet and breathing together that came uh, through meditation one night. And upon having a non-ordinary state of consciousness that kind of zung me into this understanding that we could use the internet to unite the planet and breathing together synchronously, uh, books f- fell off shelves and different things that I felt I still was refining in my studies of the breath. And uh, over the years, I became a bit of an archaeologist of breath. You know, a lot of people will just run into one system, learn it, teach it and continue. Uh, But it really has become a search of what more is there as I continued to find things that were significant to the human and then also carving them into a modality I now teach called Life Force Mastery, which relates breath to how we're living today. How can we best use our breathing to embody, to get body, mind and spirit moving in one direction? We become very powerful. Okay, so you've you've gone straight into the the sales pitch almost. There. I want to find out a bit more about you as a person, if I may. <laughs> I know you're in LA, but this is uh, this is an international audience here. So you grew up in LA, is that right? I'm just trying to get a sense of the geography. No, sure, man. I actually am a Palestinian man, Christian family, uh, okay. born in born in what is modern day Israel. <laughs> and so uh, when I was two. We moved from Israel to the Midwest. I grew up in the Midwest of the United States in St. Louis, Missouri. And then we, um, I moved to Los Angeles, California 20 years ago and have, uh, have cultivated myself out here and enjoyed, uh, enjoyed California for some time. But I must say, uh, being a Palestinian man on the planet and, uh, learning the power of us breathing together as humans, Mm. uh, has been a a a really significant piece for me in uh, establishing an understanding of really what is breathing not just for me as a a singular person but what does it mean for us uh, as a race as a human race as a group uh here i am a palestinian man growing up on this planet and i realized when i went to ask uh israelis to breathe together with me and we did there's a power there that you can't uh you it's beyond the mind it really is and so that that's that's very powerful. That's fun to to share. I've spent quite a lot of time out in Israel and Palestine, Palestine, and I've got friends who are Christian Arabs. People don't realize that group exists. You know, they feel like all Arabs right. and, Muslims, and there's Christian populations that obviously go back a couple of thousand years there, and old villages of people like that. I've met a few of them in my time. And cool, as say, there's, nice. something, there's something by that, that we call it by communal work in peace building work. There's something about breathing together, moving together, you know, dancing together, breaking bread together that does break down some of those barriers. And it, it, cause it's easy to see things like, okay, I'm a Christian Arab. That's a Muslim Arab. That's Jew. It's conceptual. Right. And then it's like, okay, on the level of the body, it's a little bit different. Yes. Yeah. When, when we, start to have these mirror neuron experiences as they're studying in neuroscience where parts of us are mirroring that which is right in front of us and connecting with with the connection uh i should say riding the connection that's already there and then we get to notice it in our awareness that's powerful uh but we're only learning uh, now via you know uh uh some of the studies that are happening you know ucla dan siegel they're studying the mind 
and our idea that it isn't even local, that the mind is a non-local phenomena we're tapping into. Well, wow, if that's the case, the story of oneness and, and the technology of oneness through us in our bodies and our beings becomes very interesting uh, to, to seek out and then to experience through something like the breath particularly. And were there particular schools you trained in? You know, was it the rebirth thing or, you know, was there particular sort of angles you came in on it with your training? I actually came through the pranayama door first. Okay. And so I studied the yogic, so for any of you that don't know the word pranayama, the system of breathing behind yoga uh, first. And what that did for me was it delayed actually my experiences with the rebirthing style and the uh, styles of breath that experience, you experience on your back for an hour and a half, more cathartic, uh, very interesting to have it in that in that order uh, because I later met people that had it in the opposite order and we you, it's, we arrive in a different place of understanding. Uh, What's once the difference you, then? People that go one way or the other because as you said, there's a few doorways into breath. Some people are coming in through Wim Hof now. You know, it's kind of popular. You know, Dan Brule has got a following. We've had him on different that's shows. Right. And that's there's, right. Then there's the yoga people who have never heard of that stuff. And I've got one friend that does breath work from Russian martial arts. You know, that's yeah. a whole different yeah. doorway, right? So yeah. it's in Marcus, some ways they end up in different places, but the different entrance points. This is how I like to unpack that is that if we take for a moment a metaphor, we think about our breathing like software upon the hardware that is our body, our being. Then when you uh, try on a new set of software, new sets of breathing consciously, you find different results. You find different states. What I particularly got interested in is, wow, uh, when I discovered new software, new software, new software, new ways of breathing, new ways of breathing, I discovered that we could then learn as humans a whole vocabulary of how to state change uh, at will. Mm. And that became very uh, useful very powerful and very accessible. You know, there's people out running around wanting to find how to create balance. How do I create balance in my life? But if one creates balance in the software that's running the hardware, you really discover a different way to start your seeking to create balance and how to, to do that. And so uh, people, just to, to unpack further, the aspects of breathing modalities that are done on your back, where you lay on your back, something to notice. You know, we dream when we're on our back. We enter dream world. We go into other places, and therefore, the body and the way that it responds on our back versus when we are upright. Most of our life spent living it upright. I found a real value to, hey, I really get to understand how my conscious breathing behaves and what it delivers. Uh, by using it sitting up. And so that became uh, an important part of the journey was how, what do I figure out here and what is there laid down as well? And I'll just give you a quick uh, collapsing of this one thought that when we do lay down and you have some of these transcendent sometimes uh, connecting to old emotional stuff that's there to be released, you really have a lot more of that laying down. It taps into it in a different oh. way. Whereas when you do it seated up, you're seeing, you know, uh, Wim Hof uh, uh, performed seated up, you, you, you'll you see that you don't tap into as much of those access points to deep old trauma. Not to say you don't uh, completely, but it's very interesting to watch how the breath behaves differently uh, in using it and approaching it differently. Yeah. Yeah, I've been exploring breath work for sort of a few months with some intensity and getting into various, you know, training programs and it did, working with different teachers. And it's just always been a part of martial arts and yoga, which I've done for 20 years. But just recently, I've kind of up my interest in it. And I've realized that the phrase breath work, actually, it's like, well, what is the work? Because for some people, it's state changing, which is valid. And that's empowering, right? To go, well, I don't have to be the victim of how I feel right now. I can actually make a choice i can you know one one uh, person we had on um, naraj he said you know it's his own internal drug dealer is how he described it you know which i thought was kind of funny <laughs> and uh you know you know able to state change and while other people are using it more therapeutically it's like okay let's work with the unconscious and shadow or trauma or holding in the body you know as Gitin tonkev was on the day you know he's talking about how we release the holding in the body that's it's just sort of emotional traumas and things from the past 
and other people are looking at it more like transcendently sort of as a spiritual practice and other people are more looking at it as a health practice there was one woman Alicia from Poland and we had her on the show and she was talking about really you know working with people with cancer they're saying hey she just wants to boost immune functioning she's not trying to get it on high you know she's got a different so it really depends what people are trying to achieve with it right as to what the work in breath work is absolutely it's a great point uh you know the, the word breath work if you look at where we got into use utilizing it in the west uh in the 70s you end up getting rebirthing breath work it's what they actually called leonard orr's uh modality that first stung a lot of people in this direction as far as healers in the west then the uh, word rebirthing was misunderstood so they found themselves dropping it and just going with the word breath work. Well, flash to the future, and you find that the word breath work is very, very uh, oriented with root words like work on your breath, <laughs> breath work. And so there's been this interesting evolution of the use of the word, I can tell you, from having been working on the actual dictionary definition. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I gathered a few people in our field and I said, hey, if, you know, you type in breathwork and breathworker in Microsoft Word, you get the red underline because it's not in our dictionary. That's interesting. And, yeah. And so we created a, uh, a definition of both words and we've gone out to the reference books in attempt to see for them to accept it. And it's in their file folders for once we hit that tipping point that humanity is using the actual word. But notice due to the COVID times that we're in, the, the evolution of our awareness about our breathing has immediately taken front seat. And now we're like, mm -hmm. okay, breath, mm -hmm. what do I do with it? And the discoveries you mentioned right then, Mark, of, uh, hey, do I use it for a therapeutic quality? Am I using it for state change? Am I using it for meditation and deepening? Those are all softwares available. It's like saying, hey, I'm in a software store. What should I pick up? Should I pick up the word processor? Should I pick up the music? Uh, program. And the beauty is this, when as humans, we discover that you shouldn't expect the, mic, the, the, the word processing program to do something that you're expecting uh, the music creation program should do. We get to understand that if we want to embody uh, aspects of the human and be able to really, you know, sit in calmness and peace. Then uh, here comes a moment I want to energize and go out and use a upliftment of energy that we don't just breathe in one way to do that. And that's the old way of thinking is, oh, I just, I breathe. There used to be a joke 10 years ago, I'm teaching this work as a breath work. I explain it, somebody will go, oh, aren't I already breathing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, had a, I, like, I like that, that, that impression. Um, it is a fun thing. Is I had a yoga teacher on the show yesterday, and we were just saying, you know, we're laughing, and then we get told, we get paid to tell people to breathe, you know, like you can't do it. But then there's, it, it's funny that there's an arrogance around it because it's so close to home that it's like, well, yes. I've been there since I was a kid, you know, like, like it, it, I mean, there's an arrogance around most things. Like most guys think they're good at driving and most guys think they're good in bed and most guys think they're good at marketing. And it's like, and breath's even closer than any of those key life skills of, you know, sales or marketing or jagging or whatever. So it's, it is an arrogance that comes from it being so close, I think. And, and it's taken for granted. Like I always used to, I discovered this in jujitsu, you know, that breath is taken for granted until someone takes it away. Oh yeah. You, you, you nailed say, that one. You, you nailed that one. Because that, that's the key element right there is you realize how important it is yeah. the moment it's challenged. And anybody that's been through any respiratory infection, respiratory issue, even bronchitis, will tell you, wow, I, I really had to focus. And therefore, I get how important it is. But man, you mentioned something that uh, it's how close it is to yeah. us. Yeah. That, you know, uh, you said arrogance, but I discovered something over time. What seems to be arrogance is actually protection. And okay. what I mean by that is people are seeking to protect what they already know, right? That's safe. Right, right, I know. Right. And so the moment I am inviting, especially amongst peers or amongst a group of people, the ability to access that close and personal place oh, wait a minute, you're not going to go to that person. It's, it's, it's like stuff's there. They know there's emotion on some level. You know, I think there's two things, isn't it? It's one, 
saying we don't know something guys i think there's a definite gender difference here guys are way worse than this than women and some cultures have this going on as well but to say i don't know something is like a loss of status for a lot of us guys you know it's like i don't want to ask directions to say you don't know your own breath that's like admitting you're a fucking idiot you know interesting piece and right on top of that sure. got this piece around is intimate so when you when you ask when you're inviting someone to the breath that's kind of an intimate move in a way right it really is. It's that piece of like, wait a minute, did I ask to get intimate? <laughs> wait a minute, was, should I really enter this place of personal space right now and in front of all these people? Uh, for some people, they've never even been invited to do so at all. So to do it in front of other people or with other people is actually a challenge. So it's really beautiful that we're pointing this out, this idea of how personal it is. And I must say, that's one of the reasons it has so much access is that because it's so personal, because it's so riding to the center of your being in every breath, every moment while we're alive, that access becomes a highway. And if you learn to use it, and by the way, I'm not a person that's like, well, you got to come try this particular modality. My belief in breath work and how it's showing up is that we're seeing the rise of the archetype breath worker. People that work with breath in all sorts of areas, all areas, and any particular breath work you are attracted to for whatever reason is probably there for you to tap into that personal highway in some way shape or form so i say to people work with your attraction yeah i just just want to jump in here a little bit because i'm I'm genuinely curious about this so it's what we've seen is the rise of breath work and as you say covid has speeded that up i think because it makes people really interested in breathing when it might stop you know when we're talking about ventilators as you know a key resource for a nation you know, I, I'm pretty sure I had the old COVID and there was definitely a few weeks where that was all I was thinking about all day long. You know, I was yeah. really, no, I was waking up in the morning, how's my breath? Am I breathing? Am I going to have to go to the hospital? How's it going? You know, it's real, a lot of breath awareness there and a lot of necessity and a lot of influence to be positive on that. And I also go, it's accessible. So breath is like, everyone's got breath or is your dad? So it's like some people cannot do a shtango. Some people cannot yeah. do Aikido. They just can't do it physically. That's right. Buddhists come and say, yeah, yeah, everyone can do a shtanga. No, they can't. Some people <laughs> no, they can't. Do. This is not true. <laughs> just cannot do it physically. Not with a shtanga. Yeah. Right. Or certain forms of Aikido. Or... And it's interesting that yoga got very external. You know, the shapes and the postures and the Instagram and the it got more the handstands, more and more dramatic and gymnastic. And at the same time, there's a whole lot of other people that went, okay, let's go in. You know, breath for me is about is a process of saying, okay, let's strip it down because you could literally lock me up, put me in a straitjacket in a prison cell, and I could still do breath work. You couldn't yeah. stop doing breath work. That's right. But it's, it's, it's almost like the last practice that could be taken away from you by definition because it's you're dead if it gets taken away. So I kind of, I'm kind of curious, like, what's gone? And, and also just that it's powerful, right? Like, just the mindfulness might take you a little while to get a result. You know, if you're sitting, meditating, if you do, I was doing Tai Chi this morning, that definitely takes a little while to get a result. But breath work, you can be like, right, do this Wim Hof thing for five minutes. Afterwards, you're like, whoa, I'm pumped, you know? Like, oh, like, oh I did that here and breathing for five minutes and now I'm super chill, you know? Like it's pretty yeah. obvious as of, it's both subtle and obvious at the same, it's subtle work, but obvious outcome breath work, isn't it? So much so because, uh, an old quote of an angry man's breath will never be this the breath of a calm and peaceful one is a very interesting from an old text but this interesting concept that the breathing behind our demeanor behind how we're being is always indicative uh there's another one uh from the Taoist that says show me how a person breathes and i will tell you what manner of person they are wow a uh, powerful statement and again instantly indicative of how you're breathing as to what is being produced in the body in the embodiment um in fact no accident that in the in the west we look at health as uh this balance of body mind and spirit why in the east is it body mind and breath same matrix spirit and breath in most of the world's languages root in the same word particularly in English, all the words that end inspire used to be more connected to the breath uh, or spirare in Latin, the breath or spirit, uh, inspire, aspire, respire, transpire, expire, all of them conspire used to be connected to breath. And so uh, how neat that the 
language creators may have been even more connected to their breathing, but that's something we can't pass on unless we do. If it wasn't spoken about, somebody passes away, how they were breathing on the planet is, is gone. And I find that interesting. What do we not know about these ancients that we revere, these ancient cultures that got us here, you know, and, and preserved ways of being? Uh, how did some of them breathe? <clears throat> So very interesting concept. You go back to the early Christians, you find they breathed together. Yeah, and it's kind of baffling. We don't know, do we? Like, it's not recorded in books. Like, I heard this walking as well. Someone was trying to figure out, like, how Egyptians walked and was saying that, like, ancient Egyptians, you know, this old song, Walking Like an Egyptian, you know. But it's like, actually, they may have just walked fundamentally differently from us. And, and, yeah. and then, like, the same thing with breath. That's kind of interesting thing to consider, right? Like, yeah. a lot of the breathing patterns we see now, you know, anxiety, modern breathing, modern posture, you know, there are some differences there, right? Um, Particularly in martial arts. You mentioned uh -huh. martial arts multiple times. Gosh, how many times have we seen how, how breathing in Kung Fu, uh, breathing in different, you know, Qigong, uh, it backs a lot of those practices or, or, or people utilize, for instance, in Tai Chi, the, the stillness of breath through that whole system is its own thing. Anyway, I didn't... didn't uh... and do you have a kind of niche? Because it seems like... So you call it a niche, don't you? Uh, like a specialism. So it seems like now breath work is getting popular. And what I can imagine happening is in kind of what happened in yoga. So what happened in yoga was there was originally it was just yoga. Then there was just dang yoga. Then there was rocket yoga. Then, the, you know, it, it, then there was like, you know, just yoga for cat lovers with one arm. You know, it got more and more. <laughs> That's and, right. But I'm, right. I'm thinking something like that might happen in breath work. You know, is it going to be like breath work for anxiety specialists? Is it going to be breath workers for certain kind of people who work with kids, yeah. who work with old people? You know, like Alicia yeah. was on, it's like breath work for cancer. It's her thing, right? What a great niche, you know, beautiful niche. So is there something you particularly uh, in, like go into? Uh, for me, particularly, I got stung, like I said, as an archaeologist of the breath and going and seeking so many to see what was there. I found myself distilling what works well for the lifestyles of today. And one of the one of the gurus I studied with, Dr. Acharya Yogesh, said to me, he was like, you know, we could use a new breathing manual every 10 years that relates how the human is breathing to how the human is living. And I was like, wow, that's really a, 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 a powerful concept and probably how it works anyway, uh, meaning New humans show up, new humans breathe, new humans have discoveries, and they share them. The issue now, though, that you're going to see is, like you said, the rise of the popularity of it mm -hmm. is going to probably have so many different modalities appear. And I'll say that can be a, a good and a, and a not so great thing, particularly with breathing, because it's so accessible. Mm -hmm. Someone can pick up and begin learning how to do so. And I don't think that's a great thing. I think one needs to seek out uh, a richness of practice, like with anything else. You know, they say you put 10,000 hours in to create some level of mastery with it. I believe with the breathing, it's very much the case. And if you're going to lead someone, having that in your arsenal is powerful. Now, I am predicting <laughs> that healers of all types will create new niches that are and niches that are very important. Mm -hmm. And we must listen and be open. And uh, the proof is in the pudding. You, you put on the particular breath work, see what that person found. If you find it as well, it's valid. It doesn't need double-blind placebo-controlled studies uh, in every case. you know. And so I think we're going to evolve our software. Yeah, and we're going to yeah, yeah. see it through the psychologists, the, the therapists. You're going to see it through the yogis and the yoga teachers. Uh, and hopefully we arrive at a place where there's a new understanding, collective understanding, that there is a series of ways and things we can use our breath to, to do, to arrive at, to live a better life, uh, uh, and, and really not be passive with it. That's, that's what I think the big rise is about, is that we were so passive uh, about our breathing, and now people will become very active and very conscious of it. What will that do to us? We have yet to see. break from the interview to tell you about our shop and a deal we've got on there and also about some events that are coming up so if you go to embodied facilitator slash shop and use the code use the code podcast podcast 50 podcast 50 
podcast 50 is the code you can get 50 percent off 50 percent off anything in the shop and what have we got on there how to design training trauma for facilitators breath work leadership resilience uh, life purpose there's a bunch of books there's a bunch of e-courses mostly for facilitators trainers coaches yogis different ebooks but that code will give you 50 percent out of anything at all there in the shop so that could save you let's see up to 100 pounds which is about 120 dollars so well worth having that code go to embodiedfacilitator.com slash shop also on that website you will see embodiedfacilitator.com slash event dash calendar just look under events under the main title you'll see all the stuff we've got coming up for events we regularly have free online events if you're interested in embodiment we have them on coaching life purpose marketing or trauma all sorts of things so have a look at the events page you can see the different one day events we've got coming up related to the conference and all kinds of other stuff okay so all of that is on embodiedfacilitator.com and remember that code there that code is podcast 50 if you want 50 percent off anything there you go a good deal back to the interview and is there a risk of a kind of consumerism here, you know, because I'm I'm almost picking like breathwork techniques out of a big bag now, you know, with the availability of, you know, it's not just that I'm like, I get to interview people like you, I'm very lucky, you know, but it's also that I can be in Anthony Abagano's, Abiano's, uh, you know, Sunday morning <laughs> class, and I can get my Wim Hof app, app on my phone, and then I can look at my Max Strom uh Max Strom kind of, uh, what's it called, online learning platform, and then I look at my, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, and that's just the last three days of my life. Just literally, I did that. <laughs> so it's, I'm not, this is just wow. an example. That's actually what it is. So I go, okay, it's almost like a consumer thing. You know what I mean? It's like going to the supermarket, particularly in the States, man. You go to the supermarket and it's like 48 kinds of cheese. Right. It's 48 yes. kinds of ketchup. You know, it's a little bit like that. And there's that sort of quality to it. You know what I mean? Like it can easily get that way. It really does, Mark. And the thing is... If a person just uh, keeps listening to their intuition amongst the sea of, off- of offerings and sea of different types or styles, see what you're attracted to. You know, I, I never uh, uh, give it like a prescription and say, hey, you really need to go do this. Uh, unless I see there's reason, I'll explain it from having known. But uh, I think people being attracted by way of intuition and, and by way of Really, uh, we're being led to these different ways, kind of like you would have been led to Ashtanga if it was good for you, but you might have been in Hatha yoga practice because it was good for you and you found that first. Same thing's going to happen with breath work is people will, you know, granted right now, it's kind of funny how you mentioned it because we've never had a time where breath workers had this oh, free reign to literally market and share their work and people would listen. <laughs> And also, like, Anthony got hundreds of people in his class because he's doing it on Zoom. It's, right. It's not like you had to pay 500 bucks and hire a room and then go to the workshop and get on a train to London or fly right. to New York. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm in my kitchen making coffee at 25 past, 30 minutes past. I click on Zoom. <laughs> right there, you know? That's right. And I'll tell you, some of the breath workers were shaking in their shoes at first because they were like, how are we going to do this work? And I said to them, I've been doing this work over, over Zoom myself for over 10 years, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, almost yeah. 15 on Skype. Oh, wow. You're ahead of the curve then, man. Oh, man. I tell you what, when you, when you, I have a gallery, photo gallery of, of clients showing up in the same exact color uh, to our sessions. And there is this concept of mirror neurons uh-huh. that I am fascinated about that I believe when we look at each other, face each other, and obviously in Zoom, we're doing it. Uh, there are activations in us that are, are really valuable and are very much human uh, capabilities. And so I think it's actually very interestingly supportive that therapists, coaches, uh, breath workers are getting this opportunity to, to mirror neuron up. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's a, a, a neat noticing. And I invited all the breath workers. We were on a call with a lot of people at the International Breathwork Foundation. I said, hey, everybody, don't be scared. Not only that, Run into it. Go find how your particular breathwork style will transfer. Don't be scared. Uh, anyway, that, that, look where we're at now. <laughs> Everybody. Well, I really saw. I, I was been tracking this. We helped about four thousand yoga teachers get online. Who were you know people? We just put it out there like, hey, we're going to do a free class on how to work on Zoom because Daniela and I run the embodiment conference and been doing it for a few years. So we're like, yeah, let's help people out. And 4,000 people turned up. We're like, whoa, okay. We definitely, <laughs> whoa, definitely saw that like some and some of my students as well took it as an opportunity. 
they were like, great, okay, the, things have been disrupted. I'm going to make the most of it. Others yeah. just were like a little careful at first, and maybe that's good. They're like, is this my thing? Is this my medium? That's a good thing, you know. And yeah. others were just never got onto it. They were just like, just from fear, just from being stuck in it. This isn't what I do. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and that's fine. That makes the whole world interesting, right? The different people, different things. I mean, do you, what are the differences for doing breath work for you online? Do you see any kind of, obviously we can still see people, but you can't touch people. You can't feel them in quite the same way. I mean, do you have any sense of like how, what's lost for you as a teacher? Particularly for me in Life Force Mastery, the modality I'm teaching, that I am I'm particularly wanting to fill your what i call superhero satchel your bag of tricks as a standalone vehicle being able to create uh what you want in state change what you want in your creation of your day a morning breathing practice deepening of meditation uh uniting with your group co-creative group by breathing together i teach those things and they do not uh suffer at all or, or lose anything in the approach of how to do that. My work doesn't have any touch involved in it from the therapist's perspective. Uh, I do find some value when people are creating releases. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a particular modality of breath work where releases are there, there uh, there's two schools of thought. One is you don't touch the person at all, but there are in transformational breathing, that's one of the modalities, uh, touching places where permission has been given ahead of time and, and it's assisting the release, that that I can say isn't going to happen online uh, unless a person is led to touch and release and help release along themselves. So that's the only place I've been seeing kind of a dip is when touch therapy is maybe a part of it. Um, definitely, I can say the presencing of a human being with you has a warmth to it. We all have experienced it, you know. But, uh, but there is so much effect and effectiveness and result by because it's you breathing it. And that's a cool thing I often arrive at at the end of a session. I'll say to people, hey, what you're feeling, I didn't breathe for you. No yeah. one's going to jump over there and breathe for well, you. You did that. Right, I just right, guided right. it. And that, too, is empowering. People go, wow, you know what? He's right. I'm on Zoom. He's a thousand miles away. And we just did it. And I, I did it. And so when people feel that for themselves, there's a beautiful, beautiful empowering. It's actually why breath. my work is 75% uh, breath work, 25% uh, life coaching. Mm -hmm. It's a life coaching, breath coaching that happens because yeah. the breath uh, begins to evolve different parts of our life. If you work with someone weekly got to know how to respond to that and so it's been a really wonderful opportunity to be there for people just presencing while they have uh evolutions happening through the breath <clears throat> do you see different personal patterns show up in the breath as well so there's this idea in embodiment of body reading or somatic assessment and you know for example if it's just a more emotional people breathe a bit more in the chest you know it could be as simple as that or some people are quite subtle about it is this something you have a have a relationship to Oh, you nailed it on the head, Mark, because the way we breathe habitually, the way we breathe due to how we live our life begins to imprint on what shows up in the entirety. You know, imagine we breathe 12 to 25,000 breaths a day. And so let's just say I breathe uh, 50 breaths of a technique. You still have that entirety. If I turned on the Super Bowl and the score was, you know, 15,000 to 10 or 50, you get it. It's it's a, a completely a lopsided game for a while where the way a person shows up is the way they've been breathing. Uh, very interesting, by the way. This isn't just from a state of, uh, A, you end up breathing high in the chest or a person has an affinity to breathe slower than the other. But notice this. Two of my students that were 40-year meditators, they were actually friends, so it's kind of fun to have them both have this experience at once. 40-year meditators, mind you. And we went into the work, and I said to them, hey, <clears throat> you notice that you're just doing everything super slow, and you're attempting, even when I want to speed the breath up with you a little bit, that you want to fight to make it slow. Is it possible you form this thought through spiritualism and many, many years of meditation that slow equals good, that slow equals best? And they were like, wow, that's interesting. What are we missing? And I said, you know what? You're achieving these deep theta states, these theta meditations. Oh, they're so fabulous. I, I commend you. That's the harder stuff to get. But what are you missing? And I called it, and both of them had like, a, oh, they were like, 
<laughs> was I said, when you speed that breath up a little bit, you're going to fire a more alpha uh, brainwave status, which gives you creativity. I said, have you been feeling dimmed in the creative realm? And they were like, yes. Wow. What a, what a neat thing to discover that wasn't having to do with them uh, uh, creating dis-ease. It wasn't anything to do with with uh, heading in a direction that was hurting the body. It was just consciousness behaving based on how they've been breathing for many years. Slow equals good, as an example. Yeah. So, gosh, what a discovery. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And do you see any kind of cultural patterns? You know, if you're kind of like back in Israel, Palestine, or, you know, different groups you must bump into in L.A. is a pretty international city. So, you know, like uh, British people are often a little bit narrow. We're not so much breathing into the width. Oh, you yeah. Know, you see Americans, yeah. Much, you know, they've got more of that width going on. So, like, is there any other patterns you see like that? I'm kind of curious. Very much so. And I mean, this came from working with uh, people. I'm a personal trainer as well. And so one of my clients that's an Englishman, and he's very proper, even mm -hmm. in the way that he holds his body. And I had to get him to break out of the norm that was given to him by uh, social norms, you know, social norms, things we've accepted uh, that have to do with how we hold our body and how that might impair my breathing. Uh, I, I So what I do is I say to him, uh, don't be so polite. Get out of the polite right, right, breathing right. manner. Where, I, where, And mind you, this is a funny one. I say to people, we're standing in a world where if somebody hears you breathing, you, you're moving the breath enough to hear it, they might come check on you. That's uh, kind of fun, uh -huh. right? And well, so there is a way yeah, it could be breath can be seen as either your, if you can hear someone's breath, either they're sick or they're a sick <laughs> or they're turned on. Do you know what I mean? Or they're angry like or they're turned alert. on. So there becomes an alert socially to I hold my breath in place. I don't move it or if I do, it means something. And that's that's a neat one to crack open and uncover because I I have, often have people leaving my classes saying, you know what, I'm, I'm now part of the crew where moving our breath loudly in a, in a way where we're developing a feel-good element. Let's make that the new norm. And, and I like people people breath workers get into like, oh, you on in, oh, I'm making noises. And it's, it's whole, as long as the whole crew's like that, it's fine, right? But if you've got a couple of our friends around who haven't been initiated, it looks a bit weird, you know? I was waiting for a flight in Dubai and I decided to do some breath work at the gate. Fucking and it Dubai was absolutely in the middle of the night. That's the shopping center airport from hell. I'm always there in the middle of the night. People <laughs> buying crap at four in the morning. You're like, what time? Isn't that where, the where am thing? I? Why are there guys in skirts? What's happening? Yeah. Always yeah. Right, right, right in your face. What did you do then? What did you do? Is you're in the line. And I did breath work right there because I was waiting. It was a long wait. And I ended up with 10 people asking questions. Oh, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? And, you know, the fun part, though, was to explain to this Muslim man that when they were chanting, they have a chance that they chant uh, and you say it on the in and on the exhales, one particular chant. And I said, you see how you all are breathing together as you, as you chant that? You feel there's a power in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, man, it was, uh, it was very interesting. Like you said, culturally, it shows up in different places and it does affect how we behave uh, uh, in this human body. Do you think different languages affect the breath in the, I don't know, let's take Arabic and Farsi, you know, they're, they're, they're two different languages. They sound different. Like I, I was talking to my Israeli friend yesterday and she's, she's speaking to me in English and it's like English, la, 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 la. And then, then her husband comes in and she goes, <laughs> and it was an entire, now people out there might think I'm just some kind of racist. I'm not, I'm talking about the breath pattern of Hebrew is totally different from the breath pattern of English. And I wonder oh, yeah. if there's an impact of that. You know what I mean? Very much so. You know, personally, I, I'm one that when I was 16, I had a one year stint in Germany. My parents decided they would buy a restaurant with their cousin, my dad's cousin, and we went to Germany. All of a sudden, I'm in Germany. And I'd never really heard or been immersed in German. But mm. when I found that there was this way of like, they, everybody sounded angry to me for it's a moment. Until yeah, so I learned the eloquence of how uh, that language uh. might exist outside of that sound. Anyway, to, to, to being a speaker, native speaker of Arabic, and being interested in Hindu, uh, Hindi and, and Sanskrit over the years because of pranayama, I discovered that uh, vowels in, in languages that have, uh, uh, not vowels, particular uh, pronunciations that go back in the throat and create a sound of breath. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, like in Arabic, the word for soul is roh, roh. 
Ruach. And so that, yeah, so when you hear that, hey, but in, in Hebrew, they use the word for breath, I believe, Ruach. Notice yeah. it's a th, where in, in Arabic, the word connect, they're connected words uh, from the, the history, but language. one is Ruach and one is Ruach. And so you have Ruach. And so you have people utilizing very breathy parts of their language. And I find that those uh, those cultures and those people using those languages end up more connected to the movement of breath. Uh -huh. Not to say they're more conscious breathers, because yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. be straight up with you. I'm, I, I have plenty of Arabic people that I know that even though there's a lot of breathiness in the, the language, they don't consciously breathe at all. It's just not in their evolution yet. So I, there's something to say about uh, people do have very beautiful connections to human expression. If you watch someone Spanish versus someone in an African country expressing in their language, we see breath as a part of our human expression and it's attractive. I believe it added to how we expressed something. In fact, if you were to try to hold back your breathing or you were one that can't speak very loudly, you'll notice the expression is dimmed. But when the breath can be big, yeah. if you've ever... Yeah, yeah. No, the first time I had a Jamaican guy laugh, like, my parents had a Jamaican friend, he was like, ho, 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 And I was used to, like, English laughing, which is like, ho, 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 Right. It was like a full <laughs> embodied, full heart, non-apologetic laugh. And I was just like, yes. wow. Like, I knew this guy had a different whole way of living just from that breath pattern, you know? Oh, man, that's nice. I, I like that. I love when we discover things about other humans, you know, uh, just because they're living on the other side of the planet and the culture is creating something different through them, uh, just by how they're living. I, I believe breath is so a part of our, our seed center. Uh, what, what do I mean by our center, our actual seed moment, is that when we're inside of our mother, month four comes and the ears open up and you begin to hear mama breathing. And so the sound of breathing it goes way back into our psyche to where we, life, had it that for five months, you're going to sit down and listen to your mother breathing more loud than any other sound. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I infer, I have a theory that that makes breath our first teacher. That if mom was breathing fast, it meant one thing. If mom was breathing slow, it means one thing. And this may be why Ujjaya breath is so uh, infiltrating. You can immediately go to Ujjayi breath and the sound of the hiss in the back of the throat becomes uh, having the ability to gather my awareness quickly. Why is that? Is perhaps the primordial sound was five months of us listening to this sound of breath. And uh, it sounded like, because it was muffled, we're on the inside, possibly like Ujjaya sounds to us now. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Cool, man. We need to move towards wrap up. I'm gonna go to 200 social workers to train in for <laughs> basic meditation and breath work. To waiting for wonderful. Me. So, uh, so I honor like, you. Can, you. can you do teach a few social workers tomorrow? I was like, yeah, sure. And I just got some emails saying there's 200 of us signed up. So I'm like, okay. So beauty nice. of the internet again. You know why not help people? Yeah, out. brother, great. So kind of anything we have, we got to still got a little bit of time though to hear. So anything we haven't talked about that you want to talk about before we tell people like where to find you and stuff like that. We have spoken about the aspect of breathing for self a lot, but uh, part of uh, the vision that I carry uh, is with a group, a uh, global group called Do As One, that has the mission and vision of not only raising the awareness of conscious breathing on the planet, but also uniting a billion people and eventually the planet to breathing together synchronously. Uh, we have a platform. It's available to everyone for free. You don't even need an app, but you can hop right in and use it for your own health, for your own advancement of connection to this planet. While we're all feeling somewhat disconnected in our own uh, homes, the ability to back that connection back up with breathing together happens every day in the World Breathing Room. And so I invite you to worldbreathingroom.com. Okay, we'll get that uh, on, the, um, on the link here as well. If people, uh, and why don't you share your, your other website as well while you're at it? So we people thank you. So the breathing education is at omnibreath.com. If you'd like to visit me, email me, reach out. Uh, I'm going to be releasing some new things soon as far as group stuff. Um, uh, the doasone.org or worldbreathingroom.com both get you to the same place where you can breathe with people from all over the planet. Uh, you know, the, the tool is there for free. We, we created it because we want the planet 
to breathe together. We want to invite beyond race, color, creed, you know, the breath doesn't have a religion. And so it makes it very easy for people to say, I, I, I get why we would connect in peace by breathing together. It becomes real why, do, why don't we do a world record for the embodiment conference? So we're going to have probably half a million people for the embodiment conference. I know you're a speaker. That's, what we yeah. could do, we could do a little world record attempt just for fun, like most people breathing together at once online. And Let's do it. Set that up with Daniela. What we'll do is we could make it before like one of the main stage slots, just like a five minute thing. And uh, we could do it like in association with that. That's kind of a fun thing to do. And it's hard yeah. to get to agree on politics, but it's like, what's the minimum we can agree to do together? Okay, a few, a five yeah. long breaths, you know? Yeah, yeah. Here's my one request. Um, I've had moments where this invitation was given, and yet if it's just inserted as something cute, or something five minutey, mind you, we won't breathe together for more than a, a small segment. But before it, here's my request: just let there be a little bit of a tuning up of consciousness, so that we actually use that moment at its best. I feel like meditations, even where people have been meditating for years, can be heightened if we tune up the focus uh, of willpower. I believe willpower is one of our greatest powers, and so yeah, g give a slight lead up. Or maybe if my session, we I don't know if my session. We talk about it, but I think there's possibilities there. There's possibilities there. We can You're amazing for saying so. I must say I love your spirit, you know. Um, I'm always looking for places to kind of, you know, good things and connect with different people with cool stuff with embodiment. So um, I like your vibe, Ramir. It's nice to talk to you. So I'm kind of a shorter than normal just because I want to get my head together before this no, talk. No. Please do. Well, a do I have a great talk or something. So um, I will see you on the social media. People know your websites there. Do you have a closing message about the breath to finish off with? Closing message would be do not become afraid of the air. All right now on this planet, you're wearing masks. You're, no. you're slowing down. Some of you are not even coughing. When I must tell you, if you were in the ICU and they needed you to reach your lower lungs, they would have you cough. Um, I'm saying this because many people are, and so don't become afraid of the air, but rather find out more about your breathing. Let conscious breathing be not at all threatening, but let it be rather an open door to more about you, more about your health. And hopefully, as we learn to breathe together synchronously as a human family, we may see the day where we wake up, we breathe together before we head out into the world. And so that's my last charge to you all is... Uh, allow breathing together to lead us to a world of peace. Beyond peace talks, there is the breath. Uh, Beautiful. That Talking ain't alone ain't enough. And don't be afraid of the breath. I love that. You know, like how basic is it? Making everyone afraid of the breath right now. That's got to be a bad yeah. thing. It's so fundamental. So, yeah. Shukran, thank you very much for joining ah, have one. <laughs> Welcome. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to see you again, mate. So, real pleasure. Good first meeting. Thank you, Mark. Great pleasure, brother. Bye -bye. Have a great one, everyone. Blessings. Bye-bye. some ways to uh, get more to give back and to get more involved now so um the biggest request i have would be to share the podcast with your friends people that you think would really enjoy it um email it to them put it on your social media tell them about it old school um yeah really appreciate that equally if you want to support us financially you can go to patreon that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash embodiment podcast and give us a dollar an episode and i'd say they're well worth a dollar so um that's less than a pound if you're in UK-ish. So yeah, please go there. Um, on the embodyfacilitated.com website is where this is hosted. If you're, most people I think listen to for iTunes. Um, iTunes, we'd certainly appreciate a review. The way iTunes works means that a review means more people will find it. iTunes regards it as more important for searches. So even a couple of sentences review really does help as a little thank you to us. And if you want to go to embodyfacilitator.com, you can see the actual you know links to the sites. This comments on there um the facebook group tends to be where people discuss things so if you go to uh, put in the embodiment podcast into facebook there's a page which is relatively quiet and a group which does have some discussion on so um yeah i will reply to things personally there so um also on embodiedfacilitator.com website 
Uh, there's all sorts of freebies there. There's videos, there's free eBooks, there's eBooks you can buy. And of course, there's our newsletter list if you want to stay in touch and learn about things like the Embodied Facilitator course and our, um, you know, our next Embodied Yoga Principles teacher training, then go to that website and you'll see a little pop-up and you can um, get the newsletter through there. Okay, so I think they're the main ones. Tell your friends, pay us some money on Patreon, give us a review on iTunes, uh, send us your email if you want to be on the newsletter list and get involved on the Facebook there. Oof, bit long. Uh, pick whatever you like that works for you. Mm-hmm.